Hello and welcome to the Django Celery Mastery course. Just a quick reminder, if you like this course and would like to access the source code and more, you can access this course on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, is in the video description. Having in the previous tutorial taken the first look at task grouping, let's now take a look at task chaining. So as the name suggests, task chaining in Celery refers to the ability to create a sequence or chain of tasks. This potentially provides us the ability to use the output from one task for the input for the next task in the chain. So here we can define dependencies and control the order of execution between tasks. As we've already seen in the previous tutorial, group grouping, task grouping, just a little bit about the differences between task chaining and task grouping in Celery. So task chaining, task chaining is a sequential execution of tasks. Okay, so where the output of one task becomes maybe the input for the next task in the chain. So each task in the chain is executed, this is important, one after the other in a predefined order. Whereas task grouping, task grouping, I probably didn't mention this, involves executing multiple tasks in parallel without any specific dependencies or order between them. So tasks in a group are executed concurrently, allowing them to run independently and in parallel. So to summarize, chain tasks are executed sequentially by Celery, ensuring that each task is completed before the next one starts. Now, if you didn't arrive to this tutorial from the previous tutorial, you won't know that we've already set up Redis Django Celery, and we're now going to move into the Django terminal inside of the Django container. So let's move into there. Let's uh, go ahead and start a new shell. And then from here, we go ahead and first of all, actually, we need to, from, from Celery, let's go ahead and import chain. Okay, and then we need to import some resources. So these are the tasks. So if you go into a task file here, we see we've got a, a number of different tasks, TP1, TP2, TP3, and TP4. Okay, so we bring one, two, and three in, and then we go ahead and create our chain. So I'm going to make a chain... Uh, Actually, the code's not here. So we're going to build a new chain. So task, uh, let's call this task chain equals uh, chain. And then we just need to specify what we want in the chain. Oh, actually, I did make it here. Okay. So we specify task one to be executed first, and then task two, and then task three. So just get rid of that five. Okay. So we simply specify the order of play here. So we we'll go ahead and process that by calling task chain dot apply async. And we we'll take a look. So if we go into our celery worker here, you can see that the tasks are being completed. So TP1 is processed first, then TP2. And now TP3 has then been processed. Okay, so we did add a delay of three seconds just to simulate the idea of adding or simulate the idea of processing some sort of task. So if we were to change our chain, so let's go for task three first, and then we we'll process task one, and then we we'll type process task two just to show the chain is working. So let's go ahead and apply that. Let's go back into here. So it looks like we are. Receiving task three, task one, and then we go ahead and successfully process task three first, and then task one, and then task two. So to summarize, task chaining enforces a specific order and dependency between tasks, where the output of one task feeds potentially into the input of the next task. Now, task grouping we saw in the previous tutorial, allows multiple tasks to run in parallel without any strict ordering or dependency potentially. That allows us to leverage parallel processing capabilities. So the choice between task chaining and group grouping depends on the specific requirements and dependencies of your application. 